Okay, let's turn to my favorite topic. This damn disease is reversible. It's okay to say damn. I won't do the F word. Okay, I promised Steve if I say the F word, he can't invite me back. But uh, it will say the D word, the damn word. This disease is reversible. So let me take you through that because I think it's such a cute story. This is Norway. This is 1940s. This is World War II. This is when German regime comes in and takes all the animals out of a country it occupies to take them back and feed the troops and the public and the regime. And people have to eat largely plant-based, out of gardens, out of forests. They smoke less, admittedly. Uh, they certainly didn't have less stress. And overall death rates go down. And when this was reported in the late 1940s, it was exactly the opposite of what most people anticipated. Probably death rates went up in these occupied countries. I'm not talking, obviously, in death camps. I'm just talking in the general populace. There were no death camps in Norway. And some researchers saw that data. And if you see the second picture, that is not Dr. Lester Morrison. You probably might recognize, if you're under the age of 50 or 60, that that is a different Morrison, uh, Jim Morrison and the Doors. He didn't do all that well with lifespan either. But out of that came an internal medicine doctor in Los Angeles you've never heard of I imagine, but I wish you had, who said, I'm going to start treating my heart patients in 1948. I have nothing to offer these people, and I'm going to give them the Norway diet because he knew the data. I'm going to create a diet list for them. I'm going to tell them to eat like you were trapped in Norway with no animals, and you're going to get rid of cream and butter and organ meats. You're going to stop eating you know, egg yolks. We're going to be poor, rustic diet. And he actually did it as a research study. He took 100 patients in Los Angeles in the late 40s that had had a heart attack already. So these are the real deal. Half of them, he said, just enjoy your diet. Half of them, he encouraged them. I think I can help your health with this crazy cockamamie diet that nobody calls the Norway diet or the Nazi diet or the Morrison diet, but we should. He published this data. This is medical journal, medical literature, but this is the key finding. If you look out there 12 years, Nobody was alive from his original 50 patients if they didn't change their diet. The diet that got them heart disease got them dead. For those who were willing to stop eating animal and high-fat foods and oils and butters and cheeses, they actually had a 50% survival. Before balloons, before bypass, before stents, before statins, before anything like that, food works. And we should celebrate that. And that should have been the beginning of food-based cardiology care. You know, by the mid-1950s when Eisenhower had his heart attack, 1955. It's too hard. I don't believe it. The numbers weren't big enough. Everybody says this over and over. There actually was one doctor in 1955 who sort of got this. The chief of cardiology at Harvard was a guy named Paul Dudley White, MD. Well-traveled, brilliant man. And when Eisenhower had his heart attack, he was called from... Boston to go down to Washington to be at his bedside, became his cardiologist. And he made this statement, which I live by, that a heart attack after age 80 is an act of God. That's what he said. But a heart attack before age 80 is a failure of the medical system. He said that in 1955. It's kind of like citing him saying you're as old as your arteries in the 1600s. Like, you know, that we could stop heart attacks. He said that in 1955. Morrison had already basically shown it. One guy in California that paid attention to Dr. Lester Morrison, and if you do go to Cedar sinai Hospital, I gave Grand Rounds lectures there a little more than a year ago, it's the Lester Morrison Medical Auditorium, so he's not totally forgotten, but nobody in the auditorium knew who he was, I asked. But Mr. Pritikin was an aerospace engineer. How many people know the name Pritikin? Okay. How many people knew he was an aerospace engineer? Not too many. He had many patents. He was building parts for the Air Force. And he heard of Morrison. Morrison's stuff got in the paper. And he drove down from Santa Barbara to Los Angeles. He had his cholesterol checked. He was about 44. His cholesterol was 325. That's even higher than the average American back then. It was very high back then. Um, Dr. Morrison had him do a little stress test. He flunked the stress test. Morrison said, you want to see the graph of everybody dead or you want to see the graph of survivors? You better take this list and start eating like this. Pritikin wasn't an average guy. He reminds me in concept like Dr. Esselstyn. He was bright, he was motivated. He started reading medical articles before the internet and books, and he said, I can change my diet, I can start exercising, I can lose weight, all of which he did. And he became a guru, but he was a guru without an MD degree, and that was not well celebrated. A lot of pushback, a lot of difficulties. 
ultimately opened a treatment center with some MDs in Santa Barbara, moved it to Santa Monica, known as the Pritikin Center for Longevity, moved it ultimately after his death to uh, Miami Beach. So between the Pritikin Center for Longevity in Miami Beach and Hippocrates Health, the West Palm, they kind of like own longevity, different programs for sure, but nonetheless proven. And they started to publish data. So this is one literature out of about 120 articles, 4,000 patients who stayed three weeks at the Pritikin Center. They ate plants. They learned to cook without oil. They learned to understand that excess sugar is a problem. They learned to move and exercise. They improved all their numbers, and they kept going. So quite a remarkable feat for an engineer, no doubt. And he was very humble. All I'm trying to do is wipe out heart disease, diabetes, hypertension, obesity. And if we actually followed his program, we probably could do 90% of that. You know, genetics do matter, but uh, lifestyle is stronger. And then came this funny picture. And some of you will recognize that on your right is Dr. Dean Ornish. And on your left is not Dr. Dean Ornish. On your left is a guy named Sachi Dananda, a very famous Indian philosopher and guru, very well known. He opened Woodstock with the prayer before all the craziness of Woodstock. He was kind of a, a hippie type. But Dr. Ornish actually was very close and was influenced at a very young age uh, about Eastern medicine, Eastern diet, meditation, and stress. And as a very bright Dallas-based uh, young man and then a Harvard medical student and a Baylor uh, internal medicine doctor, he started doing research, asking the question, I know there's this guy Morrison, there's this guy Pritikin, but I've got technology, I've got funding. Can we really prove that eating vegetables and fruits and beans and legumes, there they are again, and whole grains, and if you look over in that box and we cut out oils and meats and olives and avocados, can we take really sick heart patients and actually turn around their disease using technology to monitor it? But we got to do more than diet. We got to add some exercise. We got to add some stress reduction with yoga and meditation. We got to obviously quit smoking. We got to do a lot of social support, love, and uh, building people up. So he got the funding to do a real study published three weeks after I began cardiology practice. I started July 1, 1990. I read this journal three weeks later. I said, darn, you know, my family's been eating this way for 13 years. No idea this was actually a therapy for heart disease. Nobody really did. I had never heard of Pritikin during those 13 years. Nobody taught that in medical training. But Dr. Ornish showed that lifestyle based with a plant diet and yoga and meditation, he published more data five years later and he published this diagram, which I have hanging in my office. Real quickly, there's, it says baseline one year, five years. These were serious heart patients that agreed for a research study to have a heart catheterization, pictures made at baseline one year and five years of research, analyzed by a computer, looking at how much narrowing, stenosis they have, how much blockage. And what was found is half the patients were told to eat the American Heart Association diet. Those are the black circles. They got worse and worse and worse with time. So I think there's some good stuff the American Heart Association does with CPR training. But if you follow their diet, you're aging, you're getting worse. It's not enough. Moderation and everything means you're aging. And if you follow the plant diet and the stress reduction, if you look at the white boxes, your arteries actually cleaned out. The first time ever documented, 1990, 1998, that you can reverse years, months, decades of blocked arteries with changing your diet, changing your mental state, changing your fitness. It should have, again, dramatically changed the treatment. I should have been teaching that to fellows and residents. I taught it to patients. I mean, to this day, if you walked into a major place like Mayo, Cleveland Clinic, Harvard, um, you will, and, and NYU, and you ask people, who's Dr. Ornish in the cardiology department? Who's Mr. Pritikin, the response rate would be under 10%, I would estimate. It's absolutely crazy that this hasn't uh, materialized to be as life-changing as it should. But it's not ignored. If you look just four weeks ago, U.S. News & World Report is one way to assess uh, where the public's eye is. And you look at the bottom, best heart healthy diets. The Ornish diet has for eight or nine years been listed number one. People in the science world know this is radical and amazing stuff. If you look at the very bottom of the list, what are the worst diets in general and for heart disease, they're actually the three most popular diets were judged to be the worst by many scholars, the ketogenic diet, the paleo diet, 
and the Whole30 diet. They will help you lose weight, but you can lose weight with cancer, and we don't recommend that. You can lose weight with HIV, we don't recommend that. You don't want to lose weight and mortgage your future health, which is what those three programs do, whereas the Ornish diet, you lose weight and you benefit in terms of your future health, more likely than not. This also wasn't ignored by our government, because even though Pritikin did his work in the 70s, 80s, 90s, and it's ongoing, Ornish in the 80s and 90s, it took the government, and that means the people that actually pay patient bills, Medicare, till 2010. But in 2010, they really looked at the data and said, really, if a heart patient goes to a program and learns Dr. Ornish's program, or a heart patient goes to Pritikin and learns Pritikin program, we actually see them spending less money. They go to the hospital less. They need less procedures. That really works out well. We're an insurance company. Spending less money is good. And they actually approve these programs. And to this day, you can go online and say, where's there an Ornish heart program? Because he, it's like a franchise. Where's there a Pritikin heart program? Sadly, there's not enough of them. In my state of Michigan, there's one single program, a Pritikin heart program in Ann Arbor, Michigan. So I'm in suburban Detroit. I have to ask my patients. They get approval by their insurance company to learn to cook, to learn to eat different, to learn to exercise, to learn to meditate, to learn about heart physiology. They get much more training than the average heart patient in what's called cardiac rehab, and it's all covered as a benefit. But there should be one you know, in every major city, uh, and it's difficult to find. I don't think there's one in New York City, which is seriously sad, really, because there should be with all the people. I won't go through this, but Dr. Ornish keeps doing studies. He's shown that you can shrink prostate cancer in a man, that is a man thing, with the same diet, lifestyle, stress reduction. That's a pretty big piece of news. I can't talk about this topic without at least giving a hug to a Cleveland Clinic legend, Dr. Caldwell Esselstyn, probably the most intelligent and vibrant 83 or 84 year old out there, uh, I, a surgeon, Anybody know why Dr. Esselstyn, a surgeon of thyroid and breast tissue, got interested in heart disease? It's such a cute story. So his last name starts with an E, and they were redoing the surgical locker room at the Cleveland Clinic, and they had to have people share lockers for a while. So the next surgeon after E was F, that's Dr. Favalero. Dr. Favalero was the first surgeon to do bypass surgery in the world at the Cleveland Clinic, but in the world. So E and F had to share and put their gym shoes and put their dirty scrubs. They became very good friends. Dr. Esselstyn, a bit like Mr. Pritikin, just a bright mind. What's this disease you treat, and why would a bypass help, and how come you don't change anything about these people? He developed a program at the Cleveland Clinic to bring sick, sick heart patients to his home, and he and his wife, Ann, would cook for them and educate them and every two weeks assess them. And it was the same general diet. Eat real food. Don't throw all kinds of garbage on it, and don't throw animals on it. Uh, naturally low in fat, low in sugar, naturally rich in vitamins and minerals and fiber and water. And he showed that people got better and people reversed blockages. He didn't have all the funding, not that Dr. Ornish had such excessive funding. He didn't have all the funding to do an angiogram in every patient, but there are these very famous angiograms of people feeling better, stress tests better, catheterization. It's really a miracle. It truly is that this is unknown in most of cardiology, but that's why it's worth finding out with that CAT scan if you might have the problem, because there is a therapy. Now, you can take the approach, I already eat this way, so what can I do different if I find out? But I still would encourage you to find out, because there always is a little bit more. Go to Hippocrates, get detoxified, and all kinds of fun stuff. In my own clinic in Detroit, I feel like a mini Pritikin, a mini Ornish, a mini Esselstyn, and I don't say that humbly because I use an ultrasound you can do of the neck So, because I can't tell people go get a catheterization just for the fun of it. And I can show that blockages, a 41% blockage in the left carotid artery to the brain is now 21% blocked. And a 34% blockage is now less than 20% blocked. These are people that change their diet, lower their blood pressure, lower their cholesterol. I do use some natural supplements that have science that show that it improves plaque and literally can turn back the clock. It's just amazing how often we can see the body heal itself, respond. It only makes sense when you stop to think about it. If people are getting clogged up and dying of smoking, poor diets, stress, and lack of exercise, and you can convince them to 
get their diet good, quit smoking, start exercising, and manage stress, you would think that the process at a minimum would stop, and it does, and it might actually go backwards, and it does. So that's the great stuff. Just a quick case study. This is a Detroit legend. This is a U of M uh, defensive end named Mark Ramirez, 1990 to 1994. And when he came out, he was a lean, mean, you know, football machine guy. But how many athletes stay in the gym as many hours as when they're in college? He got an executive position, got a wife, got kids, got a schedule. And, you know, within 10 years, it didn't quite look like a great Wolverine that was going to charge down a Buckeye and tackle him. Uh, he was overweight, and he was quickly told he was Latino, Mark Ramirez, very high percentage of diabetics in the Latino community, particularly that he was a type 2 diabetic and cholesterol and blood pressure and erectile dysfunction. You don't need a doctor to tell you that. You know that. And began to accumulate what we accumulate early in life, too, in his 30s and 40s, medications and needles and blood tests and hospital visits. He was very concerned because diabetes had ruined his mother's health, his brother's health, his sister's health with all the complications. And he had accumulated the, uh, the medications. I see Genuvia, Metformin, Simvastatin, insulin, all this stuff. And he didn't know any way out. How many medical people tell a patient about reverse, get rid of, eliminate? It's always manage. We're going to manage your disease. And indeed... His in-laws, about seven years ago, six, seven years ago, said, you know what? You really ought to watch this DVD. You really ought to watch and read this book. There's others. Dr. Gabriel Cousins has a book on reversing diabetes, uh, Brian Clements um, and others. But Mark Ramirez got serious and said, God, nobody for 10, 15 years has said you can reverse this disease. I just got to go back. The humor is he had to go back to eating like a traditional Latino. I mean, corn tortillas and simple beans and simple salsa and some simple, you know, foods and not Western diet that he'd been eating. And, you know, within a few months, and this is not that unusual, he's just a wonderful spokesman in Detroit. He's been featured in Forks Over Knives uh, magazine many times. You know, he's no medication, no weight issues, no diabetes issues, no blood pressure, no cholesterol, no erectile dysfunction. You know, he's over 50 now. He's a mean, lean, healthy machine. I mean, that's what insurance companies ought to pay for because he's now costing the medical system, you know, pennies a year, not, uh, it's estimated something like $14,000 a year for a typical diabetic care to an insurance company. So wonderful self-care. The more you put into it, the more you might get back. I can't guarantee my patients are all going to reverse every medical illness, but the more they work at it, the more likely they'll see benefit. Uh, and if they're not getting the benefit, we got to ask why, what, what other factors are going on. So just to conclude the heart part of this to some degree, you can see the yellow line. That's what's never taught, sadly, so far in medical school, that you can get worse with age. Well, we know that, but you can actually work actively to reverse it because the science of healthy aging and healthy longevity and health span is real science. 